Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Much of the U.S. Air Force strength is due to its wide variety of aircraft, which have different technologies developed to meet multiple objectives. Many of these are part of the fleet of helicopters or vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, which can perform various tasks from transportation and medical evacuation to close air support and reconnaissance. Such a fleet began developing after the Second World War, and its first major use was during the Korean War in the 1950s. Since then, Various conflicts and geopolitical situations have prompted the creation of various helicopter designs with unique characteristics. Now, the Air Force comprises nearly 5,000 aircraft, largely being helicopters such as the UH-60M Blackhawk, CH-47F Chinook, and AH-64 Apache, among others which perform tasks such as heavy lift or primary attack helicopters. Due to the extensive use of this type of aircraft, extensive training exercises are conducted to prepare pilots and troops for the different tasks that can be performed with helicopters. This includes insertion and extraction training, which improves the speed of troop deployment and enhances the tactical effectiveness of those operations. Here, the troops practice different techniques to carry out these tasks, such as fast rope insertion, which involves soldiers descending rapidly from a hovering helicopter using a heavy rope. Repelling techniques use harnesses and controlled descent, providing greater safety than fast ropes. Other cases involve a quick and efficient insertion into the water from the helicopter, which is a technique called helo casting. This is ideal for collecting information on waterways or beaches, or clearing obstacles, wet gap crossings, or other amphibious operations. All of these techniques and maneuvers end up being used in air assault operations drills, which involve real combat simulations that test joint knowledge of fire support, reconnaissance, and logistics. These training and special operations are also carried out with other VTOL aircraft, such as the V-22 Osprey. This aircraft uses tilt rotor technology, allowing it to adapt to different missions such as serving as support during amphibious operations, especially during launch and recovery operations. One of them is the Ground Threat Reaction Training Exercise, which is designed to improve efficiency and maneuver and evasion techniques during a combat simulation. Because the Osprey's propellers can turn 90 degrees, providing greater control and speed, pilots can practice evasion of various threats. Training includes high-speed turns, altitude changes, and other tactics to minimize the risk of being hit. While the pilots move the aircraft, the rest of the crew work in coordination and communication tasks 
testing their intelligence assets. Also during exercises of this style, Air Force pilots can test the other capabilities of the V-22, including the deployment of flares as part of its countermeasure system. These flares are used to divert missiles away from the aircraft. Similarly, the aircraft has a weapon system that provides offensive capabilities. One of them is the GAU-17, a 7.62 millimeter retractable belly gun that ranges from 4,900 feet and is controlled with an interface similar to a video game. Many of these countermeasure capabilities or offensive systems are not unique to the Osprey. Several aircraft use the same or similar technologies to carry out their operations. For example, are equipped with the ALE-47 Airborne Countermeasures Dispenser System, which protects the aircraft from radar and guided missiles by dispensing flares and chafe. If it is required for defensive or even offensive actions, this helicopter can be equipped with a GAU-21 50 caliber machine gun, which provides suppressive fire. All of these features are needed for an aircraft like the CH-53K, which is used as a heavy transport helicopter in different conditions, including troop insertions, extractions, and other combat operations. This aircraft is designed to carry 27,000 pounds over 110 nautical miles, which is nearly triple that of its predecessor, the CH-53E. Also, with a total weight of 88,000 pounds and a length of 99 feet, it is the largest and heaviest helicopter in the U.S. military. Thanks to this, this helicopter has been used in aircraft recovery operations, such as what happened in September 2021 when an MH-60S Seahawk helicopter made a hard landing on a ridge at 12,000 feet above sea level between California and Nevada. After two weeks of planning, two CH-53Ks were dispatched to move the 15,200-pound plane 23 miles to Bishop Airport. Aircraft recovery operations, such as what happened with the Seahawk, are procedures that are established in different scenarios, modifying the type of tools and vehicles used to perform these tasks. If the incident has occurred at sea, different organizations, such as the Navy and the Air Force, work together to plan the recovery of the aircraft. This collaboration has been seen in cases such as the one that occurred when a Super Hornet blew overboard the carrier USS Harry S. Truman due to unexpected heavy weather in the Mediterranean Sea. Its recovery required the participation of teams such as Task Force 68, the Salvage and Diving Team, and the Naval Strike Fighter Wing to remove the aircraft from more than 9,500 feet deep. For this, they used a Curve 21 remotely operated vehicle to attach specialized rigging and lift lines to the aircraft. Then, a lifting hook was attached to the rigging, raising the plane to the surface. Such recovery procedures change when incidents involve not only aircraft, but also pilots or crew members who must be rescued. 
Search and rescue tasks at sea involve greater complexity since time is a determining factor, as it requires deploying equipment and finding people as quickly as possible. For this reason, when the help signal is received, the nearest search and rescue team is immediately deployed to the area where the signal is located. Due to this efficiency, SAR operations can be carried out in hours, but if conditions are not optimal, they can last days or even weeks. The effectiveness of these search and rescue teams results in many lives saved. However, the survival of many of these pilots during such incidents is also due in large part to the evacuation instruments and protocols implemented on the aircraft. Called air crew egress systems, these components are integrated into aircraft to allow pilots and crew to exit in the event of an emergency. The best known include inflatable escape slides that can be seen on commercial airliners or the ejection seats on most fighter aircraft. Its complexity and use of sensitive components, especially in the case of the ejection seats, require constant maintenance work to ensure that all instruments work and do not harm the pilot's well-being. In places like the air crew egress system shop, the airmen focus mostly on inspecting and maintaining these systems and related support equipment. Behind all the knowledge applied by the maintenance teams to the ejection seats, there are years of testing that resulted in the development of these systems to function correctly. Many of these tests have involved rocket sleds as a platform to analyze the effects of acceleration on the structure and performance of the seat. Usually, these tests include the entire cockpit and dummies full of sensors to obtain useful data that demonstrate the survivability of the pilots at the time of ejection. In addition to these tests that mainly analyze the characteristics of the components and their performance during use, there are training exercises focused on the handling of these tools by the pilots themselves. Many of these procedures, such as lateral drift training, help pilots learn to control their descent once they are ejected from the aircraft. This includes practicing parachute handling, and learning the best techniques to reduce the risk of injury and ensure a safe landing. Rising, releasing, rotate, stand. These training and emergency preparedness procedures for pilots and crew members are one of the priorities for the military forces. Many of these exercises involve critical cases, such as an underwater helicopter escape, which simulates emergency evacuation or egress in the event of a crash landing on water. In addition to theoretical training, these exercises include tests with helicopter cockpits submerged in swimming pools, where students must put all the skills to use and follow all the procedures learned during the course. The development of new systems and aircraft has allowed the increase in the power of military forces. Still, their complexity has also driven the development of training methods and practices necessary for their proper management. In addition, this has increased the importance of these exercises to improve the safety of pilots in emergency cases, which has allowed a reduction in the number of casualties due to incidents with aircraft.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.